has a separate funding pool. And um, we talked with the highway safety staff at DOT. And you have a scheduled audit, right? Of, we're trying to schedule an audit of 125, a safety audit. So that means DOT staff and ourselves and the local police chiefs and road agents, other people, you know, involved in the communities will go out and there'll be an audit of the road and discussion of the crashes and the intersections and what's going on, the behavior of the drivers, the types of businesses. And so that that is all still ongoing. It's it's reduced but we're still functioning and trying to us the what happened this summer on one twenty five is one of the more critical things to address right now. Yeah, but I also think what you were saying, or what I heard anyway, was one of the priorities needs to be education of the public and raising awareness about, you know, the potholes and the bridges and what your money gets you when you're, you know, and what the focus needs to be also. Is it, is it expanding 93? Is it, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I think that raising that awareness and understanding is going to be helpful and I think that's that is our role in coming in and we have to come in there and talk about that. But I think more so at this time we need to be extremely careful in the crafting of our message because we have a much more vigorous group out there that have a very different philosophy. They're entitled to it. But nonetheless, they're vocal, and they are, I can tell you, raising hell in Barrington, all right? And not for necessarily legitimate reasons. That um, part, part of our issue is getting out the vote, right? getting out the communication. The town made several disastrous decisions. We stopped a quarterly newspaper that presented issues in town and the pros and cons of those issues, that's going to be reinstated. We've learned that one the hard way. That was I had a discussion yesterday on that very fact. And what I'm what I'm the reason I'm sitting here and saying these words and seemingly taking up your time is, you know, care we need to take care in our message. We need to make sure that we, you know, that we're not um, suggesting that money that could go for repairing bridges might be going, for instance, to expand bus service into Northwood. That would be a very bad message for, yeah, in my estimation. Yeah. Others, I think, I need to stop, and others should yeah. chime in as they wish. But but understand that there are various pools of federal Absolutely. funds, and you know so. The U.S. Department of Transportation has federal highways, federal aviation, federal mm -hmm. transit, et cetera. And we got to make that clear, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, I do, I do think it's very important to help people understand that this is the consequence for you know what we're doing right now. This is our road maintenance program now. It's different than it was last year because we don't have the geography, you know. And you know those are those are facts. Those aren't <laughs> those aren't politically motivated. That's just that's what it is. And if people understand, they can they can make up their own mind about the, the situation. If they don't have the information, they're just going to get angry about it. So I agree with you that making sure we are getting the message out. I think Maryland's working on our Title VI document. Uh, it's almost done. And. We do have strategies in there for doing a better job getting out to the public and raising the awareness. I think that's critical, and I think that people are really disconnected from what is going on on the ground and what, you know, uh, DOT, even in their own, you know, local town office, they, they are pretty disconnected from what's happening. And I think that that education um, and awareness needs to be you know, one of our regional priorities, too. Thank you. Um, since we're on this topic of, of needs versus wants, I, I thought I'd relay an anecdotal story that just happened this morning. I was at the filling station, ran into one of my city councilors, ambulance drives by, I said, 
It's always seems to be busy here and over. And he, he replied that he looked at the statistics, and in the month of August, there were 587 uh, calls for the fire department to respond. I remember just a few years ago, there was only about like 300 of them would be typical. That's almost doubling of the number of calls that they received in, this, in, in a one month period. And uh, I think it's important to recognize that, that we, to be relevant, this, we, we should collect statistics like that, that, that really reflect, you know, overall, and I'm not saying that you know, all those are motor vehicle accidents, I assume proportionally the number of calls is gonna be similar. Um, as the total number goes up, the number of motor vehicle accidents increases as well. So it's, it's important to keep in mind that the, the, the demand continues to increase even though the, the uh, resources dedicated to responding to those needs are in many cases being cut. And, and it's important that, that the message talk about things like distract as, as Mark had said in the briefing document. Distracted driving, I think, is one of the key causes of some of these, these kind of problems. And uh, it also we're all wrestling with how to deal with that. More cars on the road than there has ever been before. More, you know, there's more traffic pressure. Our roads are, you know, working beyond their design capacity. Uh, you know, and there's, there's a lot of stuff that it's systemic. Like I'm saying, it's you know, and it drives up cost for other areas in your community. Like that emergency response time or emergency response. If you have to send out twice as many ambulances, that's expensive. That costs a lot of money. So, yeah, the transportation system ties into all these other aspects of you know, budgeting and everything else. Um, I just wanted to um, let everybody know, I think it's in your packet also. Um, we have this meeting, the public hearing scheduled here. There's four meetings. Uh, I believe our first is on Monday in Wakefield at 8 a.m. with uh, Councilor Burton over here. Um, there's two for District 2. And there is one for District 3. Um, on the flip side of this sheet, there's a map of the district. But I can think I might have the maps here somewhere. Uh, so, um, and also I want to just bring this up. I generated a list, it should also be in your packet. All the projects from our region, with the exception of statewide programs and um, SPR, which is State Planning and Research. Um, so and these the are PL, all... I'm the sorry? PL funds. Uh, PL our funds our are included in here, actually, for our region, because they were broken out. Um, so we have... These are the funding scenario, or uh, these are all the projects in the draft list. Um, there's a few pages of them. Um, provide comments on them to us and we can relay those at gas and hearing. Gas and hearing is a great time to comment also. If there's projects you don't see or priorities you don't see being met in the projects that are included in the tenure of um, The information we got wasn't broken out in federal, um, state, local for funding sources, so it's really good already. Mark, um, can I interrupt you for a second? Absolutely. Um, Dirk is going to have to leave at 10 o'clock. Yes. And I know that you have some news that you'd like to share with everyone about your dedication that's coming up this month. Yes. Um, on September 30th, we'll be dedicating the uh, CNG fueling station and the work up at the garage that we've done. We um, now can uh, happily say that we can fuel a bus in about uh, 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. It's and working. And this is compressed natural yeah, compre gas. I'm sorry, compressed natural gas. And um, it, we've been very, we big supporters of compressed natural gas, and uh, it's, it's working really well. We're very happy. So on the 30th, we will be kicking off a uh, ribbon cutting. Um, we're also going to be hosting the Granite State Clean Cities Coalition meeting in, in Durham at UNH. Um, also at the garage, we're fully certified to work on compressed natural gas vehicles. And I'm happy to say that I sent a mechanic out to uh, California about a month ago, let's say, and he's uh, certified 
just uh, waiting on the test. He has to take a test, I think, might be next week. And then he'll be fully certified and can inspect tanks and, uh, and can do work on, the, on the, uh, uh, the fueling systems and everything. And the second mechanic will be going out sometime in the spring. So we're very excited about it. And, yeah. the, and we're all welcome to it. Uh, everyone's invited. Everyone's welcome. I'm sorry. Yes. So I think it's Friday at 11.30, September 30th. Yeah, the meeting starts at 9. I think okay. 11 o'clock will be the ribbon cutting uh, okay. and the uh, tour of the garage and all that stuff. Yes, around right. 11 o'clock. And I can yep. send out um, the flyer for that. Thank and God. lunch yeah. at the dairy barn. And lunch at the dairy barn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, sandwiches and uh, soup and apples, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And Lou, I'm, I'm pretty much all done. If, uh, if anybody has any questions about the, the list, the format, um, let me know. Do my best with it. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Marilyn, Mark, thank you very much for your excellent presentations. And uh, I'd like to move right on to uh, Ben's uh, presentation on in, um, ITS, Intelligent. Everything's got an acronym to it, so. Oh, yes, <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Anyway, Intelligent Transportation System. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so it's paralleling this sort of grim. Uh, gas and ten-year plan process. Uh, got a few exciting projects that we're uh, excited about. <laughs> um, one would be the uh, Intelligent Transportation System Plan update or ITS update. Um, it's a, it's basically our, our plan that, that lays out uh, projects, ITS projects, uh, things like high-speed tolling road weather information system, variable message signs, uh, lots of these new technologies that you're starting to see um, going up with big construction projects just to help uh, disseminate information and, and improve traffic flow. Um, so uh, people just have a better idea of, of what's going on in the road, what they can expect when they get out on the road and, and things like that. Um, but our plan, which we share with Rockingham right now, is in need of an update. Uh, a lot of the projects that were listed in the original plan have actually been uh, successfully implemented uh, by DOT and the, the folks that they contract with, um, mainly on you know the turnpikes, uh, lots of the major major roadways, um, but uh, some signal coordination stuff also. Yep, yeah, exactly. Signal, lots of signalization. Um, but we're currently working with IBI Group uh, out of Boston to develop a contract. Uh, we went through the RFP process and, and, and they were selected. Um, so we're working on a contract with them right now. We're developing the scope and the budget. Uh, hopefully we can have a contract uh, in place within the next couple of weeks um, and start getting uh, uh, into that ITS plan update. Uh, we'll be looking for volunteers for our working advisory group and our stakeholder um, meetings that we're going to be having. And I'm, I'm, frankly, I'm, I'm looking forward to them. I think it'll be interesting. It's, it's, you know, it's getting away from all of this more political um, you know, funding issue type stuff. And you can really focus on the needs of the transportation system and, and, and really look at what's going to help Improve this this transportation system moving forward. So it'd be great to have volunteers from uh, policy, tech, uh, really anybody in the region who, who's interested in this and, and might have some uh, some good ideas to bring to the table. So hopefully we can get that contract in place pretty soon, uh, and then I'm sure we'll be getting back to tech and policy, looking for volunteers and, and get going on this ITS plan update. Dan, questions? Where does the ITS uh, contract money come from? Where does that, where's the funding for that pulled? Federal highways. And when I talk to people in the public about what we do here, uh, like the gentleman from Barrington said, our message. Now, I don't know how much public is going to show up at the Gasset meeting, but you know, I'm told that you know we're spending money on intelligent transportation systems, putting up billboards, trying to flow traffic, and they see that their roads aren't fixed. 
So I think that may be the message that you were discussing.